everyone welcome back to another video today's video we are training you've already seen the title i don't need to tell you what we're training legs uh however this is with a twist i have given you a lot of leg sessions workouts this time however i wanted to give you a leg session that i normally do as part of my accessory work the set of movements that you probably never do unless you do my crosslifter app a lot of these movements will, will, won't be new to you however some of you would probably never done this before and I thought this would be cool to, to do. Trust me, it's going to be uh, just as brutal as my other leg workouts. Um, as always, I'll give you sets, reps, tempo, explain every single one of them. And if you enjoy it, make sure you leave a feedback and make sure you leave a thumbs up. And also before we get into the workout, special mention to my sponsors, Gymshark, Core Kit, see it? The joggers, these are the studio joggers, the most comfortable joggers ever. I only literally wear these a lot of the times. And, nice compression top which will make you look aesthetic as F. <laughs> I'll put the link in my description so thank you to my sponsor Gymshark and one more thing I'm going to get asked a lot shoes these are Vivo barefoot shoes the best things to use for training legs I always get asked every time I wear these I get asked so link in description Vincent 15 for a discount yes I'm sponsored as well trust me when you wear these you won't go back to Converse or Vans these are top notch. The first exercise is a zombie squat, which I think is such an appropriate name for this movement. I like to add weighted zombie squats into my routine because not only does it help improve my front rack position for the front squats, but notice how I use my shoulders as a shelf for the bar, which is how you want the bar resting when performing the front squat. A zombie squat requires a lot of core engagement and forces you to make sure you keep your core braced throughout the movement. This is due to not using our hands to stabilize the bar. So not only do you have to make sure that your core is engaged, but also to keep that chest up and make sure you have your shoulder blades back. I use the pause to really focus on the leg drive and also to keep the muscle under tension for longer. This is great to not only strengthen your legs, but also improve your leg drive when we are at the bottom of the squat. As we all know, we tend to fail when we are coming back up from the squat due to a lack of strength. So adding pause squats to your training is a great way to improve that. As you get comfortable with the bar, then progress onto slightly heavier weight. Now, as you can see, I am not going too heavy. That's A, due to the slow eccentric and B, this is a three to five second pause. You don't want to go too heavy. Keep it light and focus on form. I am using a step to elevate my ankles for better mobility. However, you can use plates or weightlifting shoes. I am using a slightly higher elevation to focus more on my quads. Not only is this a great way to improve your front squats and your front rack, it's also a great core strengthening exercise as well as building muscle and strength now for those of you that struggle with front squats try adding this exercise into your routine so just perform this with just a bar and then superset the zombie squats with some banded kettlebell swings 
A kettlebell swing is a great posterior chain exercise, but by adding the band, this is another great way of adding more explosiveness into the movement, which means your hamstrings and glutes will be doing a lot more work when swinging the kettlebell. The harder the resistance of the bands, the tougher this becomes. This is because the band works as it says a resistance when performing the movement compared to a standard kettlebell swing. Because if you don't put enough power into the swing, especially with a medium resistance band, then it makes the swing even more challenging. If you're an athlete that plays any type of sport, a banded swing is a great way to build explosiveness on your hamstrings and glutes. If you want to learn more about kettlebell training, I have a few workouts on my channel and honestly, I am a huge advocate of kettlebell training. It is one of the best method of training in my opinion and honestly a lot of people need to start including kettlebells into their workout routine. Okay, so if you're enjoying this workout, make sure you check out my Crosslifter app for a more structured programming. Back to the video. The next exercise is the deficit weighted sumo squats. This is a staple in my training that has helped with my glute and hamstring development as well as building strength. It's funny because I see a lot of women in the gym do this exercise but guys seem to be intimidated, yes I said it, intimidated by it because of some bizarre reason. Now I know what you're all thinking, can't I just hold on to the dumbbell when performing this exercise? And yes you can, however the main reason I perform this exercise in this manner is because all the work is done with your legs and core. By holding on to the weight, the hands will be doing some of the work, which is the exact opposite of what we want. Now notice the slow eccentric, yes, another pause at the bottom, and this is very similar to the zombie squat, except this time a wider stance puts all the focus on your posterior chain and little quad engagement. We want a wide stance, with feet pointing outwards and having my hands out in front ensures I keep a nice neutral spine and notice how I lean forward as I squat down. That's to put more emphasis on my hamstrings and glutes when performing this exercise. This is absolutely fine as long as you avoid rounding your back. There are alternatives if your gym doesn't have a weighted belt or if you simply are uncomfortable using the weighted belt. and then superset the sumos with an explosive box step up. This is a great unilateral exercise for hamstring development, but also a great explosive exercise. On like a standard step up, notice how the working leg stays on the box. This is to keep your hamstrings and glutes engaged throughout. This movement is a lot more challenging than it looks, so start without the weight to get a feel for the movement. It not only requires strength, but good stability as well. Notice how I take my leg off the box before I perform the step up. With a lot of the exercises in this video, the aim is to not only focus on hypertrophy, but will also transfer well into other training modalities. So whether you play sports, or you do things like Olympic weightlifting, perhaps you also partake in CrossFit, or like myself, a crosslifter, which basically means my training is a hybrid of bodybuilding, conditioning, functional training, as well as Olympic weightlifting, and even some outdoor cycling. Now this exercise I learned from my coach and it's absolutely brutal and a great exercise. Now I know what you're thinking, why am I using the trap bar to perform the RDL? Well, it allows for a neutral grip, which is preferable. 
However, this exercise not only requires a quick leg drive, but also a lot of stability as well, because when you do stand up with the weight, the trap bar will shift from side to side. You need to make sure you brace your core and engage your lats before you perform this exercise. And of course, the heavier this gets, the more challenging it becomes. Notice how I make sure to brace and engage my lats and core before performing the movement. The challenge is to keep that trap bar as stable as possible and avoid letting it pull you one way or the other, which means your core will be working twice as hard to perform this movement compared to a standard RDL. You can use heavy kettlebells if you don't have a trap bar at your gym. Remember, this is still a hamstring and glute exercise, so focus on almost driving your feet through the floor when coming up with the bar. The working legs should be doing most of the work here, so your arms and back legs are just used for stability. As you get more confident, you then want to build up the weights, but remember you still want to be somewhat quick off the ground, so if you're struggling to come up with the bar, strip the weight down. Then superset the trap bar DL with front rack walking lunges. Yes, this sounds as awful as it feels and yes, it hurts. And that's why I absolutely enjoy it. <laughs> Holding the kettlebell in a front rack position, once again, just like the front squat, making sure you engage your core and keep your shoulders back. Try not to chicken wing the kettlebell. AKA, try not to have your elbows too far out when holding the kettlebell. You should try and keep your elbows as close to your body as possible. If you've watched my leg videos, then you pretty much know that there is a weird thing I do at the top of the lunge, which is to contract my glutes as hard as I can before lunging forward. If you don't have kettlebells in your gym or heavy enough kettlebells, a great alternative will be doing front rack dumbbell walking lunges. Finally, it won't be a leg workout without my staple bye bye legs finisher. 12 minute EMOM of 45 seconds. However, the bike has to be on the hardest resistance as in it should be really tough. You should feel like you're cycling uphill. And then 12 dumbbell front squats. I am using two 22.5 kilo dumbbells here. Now I have to tell you after that leg session, this Imam was not fun at all. That's the workout done. I was gonna say simple, but all those movements are not simple. So remember, because some of these were new, be careful, start light, always, always start light. Um, I'm giving you alternatives. Uh, any questions, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. It helps my channel. And uh, yeah, enjoy, have fun. That's it, I'm done. Peace out.